If you die, would you let your pet see your dead body? I recently came across a thread on Reddit discussing the topic of whether you should let your pet see your dead body when you die. It was a thought-provoking question. As a dog owner myself, I'd like to think that I would outlive my dogs, but in the event of my sudden departure from the living world, I would let my dogs see me, you know, dead. People at the comment sector, as well as the OP, have the same opinion as well. Quoting one person who had a similar experience with their cat, as they had to put one of their cats down, they brought her home in her carrier and left her in the kitchen as they went to the garden to dig her grave. The other cat came over and sniffed her, then recoiled. Once they had laid the cat to rest, the other cat came out and sniffed around her grave, then sat for a while. They understand. Another person with 20 plus years of experience in dog rescue shared a sad fact that when the dog owners pass away and the family doesn't want to keep them, they are put to the rescue facility with confusion in their eyes like, what happened? Where's my friend? P boner and other human anatomy cheat codes. One interesting Reddit thread I found is the one discussing cheat codes of the human anatomy. The OP shared an experience where she drank a cold drink too fast, ending up having a brain freeze, so she quickly licked the roof of her mouth to stop the freezing. Another interesting finding was the pee boner. I was genuinely surprised to see there were people not knowing about pee boner. The incident was that she had to lift her toddler from his bed because he woke crying as if in pain, but it turned out he just needed to pee having signaled with his pee boner. She further found out that unwanted erection can be got rid of by focusing on tensing the thigh muscles. Theoretically it's true because erection is caused by blood pumping, so refocusing blood pumping to other part of the body of flexing muscles could decrease blood flow to the male part, thus soften that thing. One more cheat code she found to be occasionally effective is by looking upwards toward the sun while she needs to sneeze, but she can't would make her sneeze. She stated that this only worked if the person had photic sneeze reflex. How do you communicate with your kids if you travel for work a lot? One Redditor recently shared a tip of how to bond with their kid while they have to travel for work most of the time. They send the daughter a picture of the menu at every restaurant they visit, she chooses what they eat, they take pictures of the food, and then they both discuss it. If it's good, both of them will make it together when they're back home. It's a wonderful idea, commented by lots of other parents looking for a way to communicate with their children while they're away for work. In the comment section, one of the Redditors who was a nanny caring for children whose parents were usually travel shared another tip that helped both the parent and the child build memories, even when they are not together. So whenever mom's dads travel, they take pictures of where they are, be it in front of a waterfall, a business meeting at a skyscraper, or a beach, etc. The nanny usually helps the kids recreate their parents' photo, trying to dress like them, trying to hold something similar to what their parents were holding, trying to pose like them, and of course, trying to build the similar backdrop, like a shower for the waterfall, or a pool with lots of stuffed animals for the beach with seagulls. It's a fun and helpful thing to do for the family to keep the bond strengthened. How do you avoid pressure during pregnancy when due day is near? Tell your friends and family that your due date is two plus weeks later than the actual date. This one helpful tip is shared by one Redditor to avoid annoying texts and accidental pressure on the status of the baby. He had gone through such annoyance during the birth of his first kid, so he and his wife agreed to keep a low profile with the second kid. They remember that every hour passed, they received a text or two asking how it's going, any news, just checking in, yada yada. They both understand that people do that because they care, and they also communicated that they would let people know and further asked to give them some space. However, it's a very stressful time, and the added family pressure expecting to see the baby during a high-risk pregnancy and induction does not help at all. I'm sympathetic to the dad of the story, as I would be stressed out a lot if my wife was in labor and I kept getting one text every 10 minutes asking to see the baby, and when I turned to look, my wife was still going through the most intense and stressful and amazing experience for us, and she was nowhere near finished. Yeah, so I agree with the OP that the labor moment should be kept between the moms and the dads. A candy bowl is what you should bring to the hospital visiting loved one. Why? According to a Reddit thread I came across, the candy bowl was a doctor-nurse magnet. The father of the OP had a long stay in the hospital after a stroke. By placing a bowl of candy next to his bed, he had been having doctors and nurses stopping by even from the other side of the building, checking on him. He got to meet many new people, and almost every single member of staff in the hospital had stopped by at some point. Most of the comments were in agreement with the OP. One shared a similar story, when their grandmother-in-law was bedridden, and with the bowl of candy, she could offer anyone coming by. The staff there thought it was really nice of her. This gesture makes the doctors and nurses feel appreciated, and being a medical worker means constant pressure and lack of sleep. A little sugary boost is never a bad idea.